Hello and welcome to this demonstration of our 5G over the air measurement system. So this is our demo setup. We have a signal generator providing a 5G signal. We have an RF receiver which digitizes the received signal and sends it to the PC. We have Calnex providing a 1PPS reference into the RF receiver. And then the MATLAB application on the PC computes the synchronization time error and displays it as a graph. So here's an example of that measurement running. This is a real capture done from the signal generator. This is running a little faster than in real time. But you can see here, we're sort of showing a time error, which is varying a little between, oh, I guess, about plus 35 nanoseconds. And down here, it's going down to about minus 60 or so. So why do we need to measure this? Well, first of all, let's take a quick look at 5G and all its promises. It's a big step up from 4G. You know, we're trying to do things with lower power. We're trying to get lower latency of network connections, we're trying to improve the reliability. Importantly, really, we're trying to improve the density of connections. So going from about 10,000 per square kilometer to about a million. So two orders of magnitude improvement. And we're trying to make it all go faster at the same time. So there's a lot of things going on. So how do we make all that happen, particularly the, the higher density of connections? Well, one way is to increase the number of base stations. So looking across history, we started with analog mobile phone system, then we went digital and we had GSM in Europe and CDMA in America. And then everybody aligned around 3G, UMTS, the Universal Mobile Telephone System. That then evolved into LTE 4G and now increasing the density further going to 5G. However, to put these things closer together and make them more dense is expensive. We need more base stations. To make more base stations, we tend to make them smaller. And in order to keep the costs down, we do everything we can to get rid of connectors, including the one PPS test output that's traditionally used on a larger base station. Plus, you know, we're trying to maximize the bandwidth. So that needs better optimization of the spectrum, which in turn needs good interference management. And that requires us to synchronize within the limits defined within the standards. Another change in the 5G is the elimination of guard bands between operators. Traditionally, within an operator, we would worry about interference, particularly at the cell edge, where the two cells come together and the RF signals will interfere. So one still needs to do RF over-the-air measurements, synchronization measurements on a cell-by-cell -cell basis or within an operator. However, now we also need to measure the second operator as well. They too have a network, they will interfere themselves. And because of the elimination of the guard bands, two operators risk interfering at the frequency spectrum edges. So in order to get better coverage and provide good signals to the users, we often put cells in hard to reach places. And so the only way to measure this is to use an over the air measurement. How does the measurement work? We have a setup where we have a GPS receiver disciplining a rubidium source to provide as a one PPS reference. This is our time reference. And then we have a digital receiver which receives the signal from the G node B, turns it into digital INQ samples. Those samples are time stamped from the reference. And then the samples are processed to find the secondary and primary synchronization signals from which we determine the cell ID. And from there, we calculate the time to the start of frame and figure out the time error. Let's take a look at the 5G over the air Sentinel GUI. So here's the main measurement window. And as you can see at the moment, not very much is happening. The signal that we're trying to measure, we're not currently locked to. And that's because we haven't configured the parameters correctly. So let's go through that process. First of all, select the mode. So we have a choice between an LTE measurement or a 5G new radio measurement. In this case, we're already configured to 5G new radio. So we'll just click OK. And now we can go to the settings. So channel C where our card is plugged in and a few parameters on this page. Firstly, we have a band that refers to the band number as defined in the 3GPP standards. In the case of N78, that's just over three and a half gigahertz. So there are a number of other possible selections, but we'll leave it on N78. Then we need to select the subcarrier spacing. So again, we have choices. Uh, case A refers to numerology zero, which is the 15 kilohertz spacing. And cases B and C refer to different subcarrier uh, layouts for the uh, numerology one spacing, 30 kilohertz spacing. So in this case, we're interested in case C. 
Next, we need to find the position of the SSB. So we need to know the frequency, and that can be specified either using the synchronization raster, which is specified using the global synchronization channel number, as shown here, or if for any reason the SSB is not on the sync raster, then we can specify an absolute frequency. And we've just typed it into this box here. So in this case, uh, we are on the GSCN, and in fact, we're on 7855, which you can see here translates to just over three and a half gigahertz. So now we need to go and search for the SSB. So we click on cell scan, and this takes a few moments, but with luck, this will find the signal, find the SSB, decode it, and tell us what the physical cell ID is. So here we go. Uh, we have a frequency of just over three and a half gigahertz. The physical cell ID is 264. It's a TDD cell, which is actually defined by the band number. And a confidence level of 100% says we found a good strong signal and we're able to correlate to it. So we'll select that, click on OK. And here we've now set the physical cell ID to 264. And we can go and start our measurement. So we'll click on OK. And now the signal, we're now trying to lock the signal again. This takes a few seconds. Uh, it has to scan uh, along the captured data to find the relevant part of the signal. And we can see it's now found it because it's starting to make measurements. And now the lock has gone green, which means we're good to start our measurement. So we simply click on Start select the file of interest that we're going to save the data to, click on OK and let it run. So you can see it here just starting to gather data for the measurement. Uh, once this reaches 100% then we should start to see a graph a few seconds later. It takes a few seconds because we do a little bit of averaging to take out some noise and things. So you can see here we're getting a measurement between about plus 60 nanoseconds and minus 20 nanoseconds. So that looks pretty good. And we can just leave this to run. It will run automatically here for a little over nine and a half minutes, but we'll stop it manually after a few seconds. Okay, so you can see the data uh, coming in and being displayed. So at this point, we'll click on stop and we can click OK. And that's the measurement complete. 5G NR OTA measurement is one of a suite of measurements within the Calnex Sentinel, making it the reference test tool for LTE and 5G sync measurements. So for more information, please visit our website at calnexsol.com. Thank you very much.